This is the Canon RP versus R versus R7 versus R10 versus R6 versus R5 versus R5C versus R3 video. I think I got them all. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. trying to buy a camera, all of the R's may confuse you. So I am here to add some clarity and give you the lineup. And no, for pity's sake, I don't have every single camera here. Who do you think I am? But I do have the R5. It's just, it's just recording. <laughs> So let me break this down for you one by one. We'll do a little comparison. We'll talk megapixels, focusing, price, all the things that you need to know. But most importantly, we're gonna talk use factor. Who should be using what camera? What tool is best for you? Before we get any further in this video, let me tell you about this video sponsor, Squarespace. This one was easy for me because I've been using Squarespace for over a decade and you can see it at vanessajoy.com. I decided to use Squarespace so long ago because it was and still is one of the easiest ways to make a website out there hands down. Squarespace is a platform where you can create beautiful custom websites in just a few minutes. Choose from a plethora of templates where you can easily plug and play your own work. It's an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. We all know that an online presence is crucial for your brand, so build one that stands out. Squarespace isn't just for creating a website, Website, it's about making money. You can sell anything, products, the content you create, and even your time. Of course, as a website, Squarespace lets you create beautiful galleries to highlight your photography portfolio. But what you might not know is it also can host your video content too. In addition, it can help you monetize your art or your expertise by having online scheduling built right into your website to sell things like mentoring sessions or critiques. You can go so far as creating member areas or have an online store where people can buy your products. Head over to this link for my exclusive 10% discount on your first domain at Squarespace. Now back to the video. So let's start with the camera I don't have in front of me, the Canon RP. Out of all of these cameras, the Canon RP is probably one that's going to surprise you the most because it is a full frame camera, but it's one of the older, the R and the RP came out first in the Canon mirrorless camera lineup. For just $9.99, the RP is a 26.2 megapixel camera. That's a pretty darn good price point for a full frame camera. Now, if I'm gonna compare the RP to anything, I'm gonna compare it to the newer R10, which I have right here. The R10 is similar in price, so it only makes sense to compare those two really closely. But the Canon R10, this one is an APS-C sensor, meaning it's a crop sensor. It's not full frame, you're not gonna get the out of your lenses. So if I were to choose between the two of them, because they're similar in price, the one thing that I would really be looking at between the two of them is their focusing capability. The R10 has a little bit more advanced focusing capability. I mean, honestly, if for nothing else, I mean, yes, the tech is there, you can go read a manual about it, but it's years ahead of the RP. It's also newer technology, any little tiny thing in there. So if you're gonna spend about $1,000, I'd be looking between the RP and the R10, and I would go with the R10, even though it's a crop sensor. The one little tiny nuance between the RP and the R10 is megapixel. Yes, the RP has like two more megapixels uh, with the sensor than, than the R10 does, but to me, that's just not a tiebreaker, and I would just go with the newer technology. Overall, still, my answer is the R10. Let's move up the line and talk about the Canon R, which I do happen to have here. Now, this has a battery grip on the bottom, so that's kind of nice, having that capability, and this was again one of the first Canon mirrorless cameras. It is a full frame camera and the price won't kill you, especially since now you can find a lot of them used. But new, the price of the Canon EOS R is $17.99 and it is a 30 megapixel camera. So we're gonna go a little bit larger on the megapixel side. The R is a full frame camera, so it's a little bit hard in price range to determine which one of these I would compare it to. Maybe the R6, but the R6, you know, 
but the R6 is like $700 more, so maybe let's just talk about it in comparison to the R7, which I have here. Again, we're looking at the oldest mirrorless camera, full frame technology that uh, Canon has, and then we're looking at the newest release, this R7. The R7 is an APS-C sensor, so it's a cropped sensor. It is not a full frame like the R, but it is closer in price, the R7 coming in at $1499, so $300 less than a brand new R but you could find a used one, I'm sure. The megapixels, they're pretty negligible. The R again is 30 and the R7 is 32.5. So if I were to choose between the two of these, knowing again, the newer technology and all of that, I'm probably gonna go with the R7. The nice thing is they both take the same batteries. So you're gonna go with that, I believe it's called the EL, E19 battery, something like that. Anyway, they take the same batteries. And if you think about your longevity, so it's something when I always talk about cameras, I think about the longevity and what I'm doing in the future. So if I'm a professional photographer, I'm gonna want to go with things that will live on with me. And sounds silly, but batteries, is something that lives on with you. So out of all of these cameras, while I'm kind of on that, if I were hoping to be a professional photographer, I probably would not buy the R10 just based on the fact that it has a different battery than I'm gonna probably be using for the rest of my career. Just something to think about. Let's keep moving up. And if you haven't figured this out already, the system here, the lower the number, the better the camera, or at least uh, the most <laughs> the more expensive the camera. Let's talk about the R6, the camera I don't have with me. This camera is a solid camera. If you are a professional photographer, this is where we start drawing the lines. All the ones I talked about before, the R, the RP, the R7, the R10, you're probably more towards the consumer line because of the price points a little bit more, but that's not to say you can't use them professionally. I mean, I use the R professionally for a long time and I probably would use the R7 professionally as well. However, if I'm really going into the professional line of things, really beating up on my cameras, using them a lot, then I'm gonna wanna go a little bit higher and I think that starts with the R6. The Canon EOS R6 is a solid camera. It came out the same time as the Canon R5. It's a 20.1 megapixel camera and it comes with $24.99 price point. Now here's the thing about the R6 camera the focusing. I might be oversimplifying this, and I am because this would be a really long video if I was comparing every single spec and every little thing. I'm just going by tangible what I care about. I care about megapixels, I care about price, I care about new tech, and honestly probably more than all those things, I care about how well a camera focuses. Because if all those things are amazing and the picture ends up blurry, I really don't care about the rest of those things. The R6 has the same focusing system as the R5. It is a beautiful, this is where we're introducing eye detection. Granted, the R7 and the R10 do have that face detection. And face and eye detection is something with newer technology, which sort of reaffirms what I said before about not going with the R and the RP because it does not have the same focusing system and that just spot on eye detection. It's much better in the later cameras. And in the R6, very comparable to the R5. In fact, I didn't notice a difference in the world, like at all when I was using both of them. You can check out a full review of the R6 here on my channel. I personally use the R5. We'll get into why in just a second. But the R6 has absolutely perfect focusing. I'm 100% comfortable using like an 85 millimeter 1.2 lens at 1.2, tracking eye focusing of somebody walking down the aisle and knowing my focus is gonna be spot on. It's great. The R6 is absolutely a wonderful mid-level professional camera. Moving further up the line to the R5, which I can't show you because we're filming with it, this is my camera of choice. The R5 moves up drastically in the megapixels. It's at 45 megapixels, and along with that, it's moving up drastically in price at $38.99. But this camera, man, 
it is just incredible. It is a workhorse. It does do beautiful video. I am doing beautiful video with it now. It's shooting at 4K uh, 24 frames per second, non-HQ, no overheating issues when you shoot that way, by the way. Yes, there are overheating limits when you go above that into the 8K, but if you're shooting photo and video, the R5 is solid for that. I personally mostly just shoot video with it, but here's why it's my camera of choice over let's just say the R6, and we'll get to the R3 in a second. The R5 is my most used camera. It sounds shallow because of the 45 megapixels. And it's not necessarily because I think I need all those megapixels or because I crop a lot afterwards. It's for the simple fact that if I want to, I can go to a 1.6 crop, giving myself a digital zoom and get more use out of my lenses. My 135 millimeter lens now becomes a 212 F2 lens. That is awesome. I don't have to bring my 70 to 200 on jobs anymore because of that. And I still end up even at that one six crop, that digital crop, digital zoom, whatever you wanna call it, I'm still ending up with about a 20 megabyte file, which is perfect for what I'm doing. So again, me, it's all about the practicality. I could give two craps about the technicality if it's not practically viable for me. And the R5 has just so many practically viable things about it that just make my life so much easier shooting as a real photographer. Let's move up from there. We have the Canon EOS R5C. Now this one came out after the R5. It's actually pretty brand new. And this is a beautiful camera. We've got some footage here that you can see. This is for cinema. I'm not gonna harp too much on this. I'm not even gonna talk about the R5C too much because if you're watching this video, I'm gonna guess mostly you are looking for a photo camera. While all these cameras do video and you can probably get whatever you need out of all of them, if you're a little bit more crazy into the video thing, the R5C is for you shooting at 8K and all the specs, all the things. But again, not gonna go into it too much. This is more for photography. I will mention that it's $47.99 is a price point on that one. And then finally, we have the Canon EOS R3. That is the top of the line right now. Although I think Canon is saying that their flagship camera is actually still the DSLR. Um, the one I have, the one I own, the one I can't name, I can't like rattle off right now. Out of all these cameras and all these specs, I'm rattling off. I, thank you, geez. The Canon 1DX3 DSLR camera that I love and used before I got the R5. <laughs> I'm hungry, I need lunch. Well, it's certainly top of the line for how expensive it is. This is the most expensive mirrorless camera body of this type. It's $5,999, so a $6,000 camera, but only 20 megapixels. I know that pissed off so many people. It's not 20, it's 24.1 megapixels. But for me, that's kind of perfect because that's what I was shooting with with the 1DX Mark III anyway. It's the same megapixel count. So that didn't bother me too much. But again, the perks of the R5 having that, it just tangibly was better for me and my workflow. However, the R3, while I do use it as a wedding photographer and I do love low light capability. The focusing is absolutely incredible. You got the eye control autofocus, which is really, really a cool function of the camera. It's really meant for more sports photographers. It shoots faster, faster frames per second. There's a, an update to it right now that just will blow your mind with how fast this thing shoots. If you are doing anything having to do with speed, the R3 is absolutely your camera of choice. Personally, I use the R3 during the reception because I like how it shoots better in low light and I like the eye control autofocus for when I'm just moving around the dance floor and changing my focusing subject very quickly. Uh, battery life. How do you not mention that the R3 has a totally different battery and therefore a much longer battery life. So there you have it, the entire, at this point, mirrorless camera system from Canon, comparing all of them, trying to bring you some clarity in what all of these R's are. R. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this lineup of cameras and tell me the things that I missed. Oh, I will tell you what you missed. Pick me. You go through an entire review and don't even mention anything about the card slots. The R and the RP and the R10 all have one SD card slot, but once you get to the R7 and the R6, they have two 
SD card slots. And then you bump up to the R5, which has one SD card slot, one CF Express card. And that's okay, but then when you go to the R3, it has the exact same thing. And all the YouTube trolls will tell you that in the R3, you should have had two CF Express card slots, but instead it has one CF Express card slot and one SD card slot. But if you're a working photographer, you understand the fact that having an SD card slot along with the CF Express card slot, just like in the R5 and the R3, is actually very convenient because when you spend $6,000 on a camera, who wants to spend even more money trying to upgrade all of your CF Express cards? And that gets expensive really, really quickly. And even if you'd like spending $6,000 on the camera, sometimes you don't like spending that much money on a card. Not to mention the fact that SD is just a standard card slot and you find it on things like a NAR box and then the size of the computers and adapters so it's just easier to work with on the job. But if you were a real photographer of Vanessa, you would know that. Okay, fine, you had that going for you. But the rest of this was crap. Had you not mentioned card slots? I did a rough overview here. I did not go into every single spec. So if you have other thoughts on this that you find valuable that you want to tell other people, please leave those in the comments. Hit like, subscribe while you're there, and I'll see you next time.